All right, today I am going to share the Geo Inquiries activities. So these are activities you can use in class with your students. They're ready to go if you want to use them that way. Um, these align really well to our middle school standards, so that's sixth, seventh, and eighth grade, and also for high school earth and space science and biology. So each activity comes with a lesson plan all written up, ready to go, and also an interactive map that students can use. So these are really great for um, some data analysis, looking for patterns, um, looking at relationships. So we're going to just look at three lessons really quickly so you can get a sense of what the maps look like. So um, the link to get to this page is in uh, the video description, or I just always Google geo inquiries to get here. Um, and you can see they have lessons in a lot of different subjects. So we're just going to be looking at earth science and environmental science today. So in the earth science collection, um, we're going to look first at this one called remote sensing. And this is one that aligns well with, um, we have a standard in seventh grade and in high school earth and space science that this could be used with. When you click on the link, it'll open up a lesson plan and it's very detailed. It tells you how to use the map, tells you what questions to ask students. It's like a very like click on this, then click on this and ask your students this. So it's ready to go if you want to use it like that. Um, you could also just take the map and create your own lesson with it. Some of these maps you could build a much more robust lesson with if you wanted something that was longer. This particular map uses some satellite imagery and then in the lesson the way they, they wrote it, um, students use some measuring tools to try to um, figure out what might be going on. So uh, in this particular one, it has these measuring tools so you can measure some distances or some areas. Um, all of the maps have a legend and a button that says content and so you can turn these things on and off. In this particular one, students can see some satellite imagery of this area as it used to look and then how it looked after a landslide. And so in this one, students are doing things like measuring to figure out um, slope and where it's steepest. Um, they're looking at the shape of the river and how um, the shape of the river might affect things here. They're also using the satellite imagery to count houses. And so in seventh grade and earth systems, they, um, there are those standards uh, that are engineering standards where we're looking at natural hazards and building things. And so this would be a great introductory activity for either of those, or you could pull it and use it in another way if you wanted. So um, that's one example. Another example that I wanted to look at is this ocean features map. So this map has a lot of different functions that you could turn on and off. And um, so it's really great for students to start looking for patterns. And there are a lot of a lot of the maps are like this, where it has um, different Feature. So there's one that has different rock types. And so students can click on it and see the different rock, rock types and start looking for patterns and also learn a little bit about them. So in this one, um, there are places where students can click just to learn some, um, some something about the area or about a concept that's related. Um, it also has these places where students can click to see a profile of the ocean floor. Um, so here's our legend, and if we go over to the content, you can see these are all the things we could turn on and off. So if students were investigating a phenomenon, they could start looking for patterns um, between all of these different things. Um, and they so we could get into some data analysis or gathering some evidence to support a claim or um, gathering some evidence to build a model of how something works. Um, so again, you could use this lesson as is, or you could take this map and use it to develop your own lesson. So we'll also just look at one lesson over in the environmental science. So um, you can see a little bit about um, the kind of lessons that are there. So again, these are similar. They all have an interactive map. Um, and a lesson plan that comes with it. We're going to look at the dead zones lesson. So this is one if you were looking at human impacts on ecosystems or biomes, if you were looking at interactions between um, 
abiotic factors and biotic factors, we could uh, use that, we could get into that with this one. So when we open this map, there are, um, we're going to see land covers, which ends up being important for this. So we can see the different types of land covers. Um, I'm going to go back over to the content and actually turn the land covers off. But we can also see the chlorophyll concentration in the water. We can see runoff. So where's running, where's water, um, or how much water is running off. We can see the rivers. We can see the amount of oxygen in um, the ocean. And then this one also has a tool on some of these where we can also see the change in time. So we're going to look at how the runoff has changed. Um, and I've noticed that this tool, the time lapse tool, is a little bit laggy. And so I usually let it play a couple of times. And so you can see I push the play button and it's going through, but the map is not changing. It usually takes about two cycles and then it'll catch up. And so now you can see over time from the January 1st, 2000 to um, projected into the future, how runoff is changing. And you can always come up to this legend and see what all these different colors mean. But this is a way that students can be looking not only at spatial relationships, but also at temporal relationships and how the changes in this case of runoff over time could be affecting things. Um, and so they can start looking at how the runoff might be changing the amount of oxygen in the ocean or the amount of chlorophyll, how all these things are related. Um, if you use any of these, I would love to hear how you're using them. If you are using the lessons as they are, as they're provided, I would love to hear um, what your students get out of it and how they end up working out in your class. Or if you're just pulling these maps and you're using them to build your own lessons or units, I would love to see what you're doing with them.